Hey, it's Wayne Fox, and it's the big day today. Lightroom 6 was finally released after two years of no upgrades from Adobe from Lightroom 5. I'm not sure what took them so long, and to be honest, on the surface, I'm a little underwhelmed. But there are some things in it that are pretty cool, and because I'm part of the uh, photographer's plan on the Creative Cloud, I get Lightroom 6 without any additional money. Basically, I'm paying $5 a month to use Lightroom 6. So it's a pretty good deal. I have no problem with that. I thought I'd do a quick video on one of the features I think is uh, really beneficial and can help a lot of people. Something that I've been doing in Adobe Camera Raw for quite some time. This has been around in uh, Adobe Camera Raw. I don't know when it showed up, but it's been, I think, since the uh, last release of Photoshop. But it finally is in Lightroom 5 or Lightroom 6, and that is the introduction of a brush uh, adjustment to the graduated and radial filter tools. Um, the advantage of this is it allows you to make a quick graduated filter or radial filter and then clean some of it out or enhance some of it uh, without having to actually make a brush. So typically in this scene, you would might maybe make a brush try to isolate the sky and all of this area in here. But with this new addition, it's actually a little quicker to do it this way. If I make a graduated filter and I let's go down and, and because of this new feature, I'm going to be fairly aggressive with it. You'll notice that it's going to go quite a bit into the mountain. Let's go ahead and bring in an exposure adjustment in there. So now I've got a pretty nice sky, but obviously I wouldn't like this. Um, wouldn't like this normally because of what this graduated filter did to the top of my mountain and my shadows over in the trees. Well, now with Lightroom 6, I can create what's called a, uh, an adjustment brush to that filter. And the most common use I see for this brush is to remove parts of it. And typically I would do this like my other video, which talks about using the 100% and auto mask feature. So I would use the erase feature at 100% with auto mask on, turn the overlay on, and now I would just paint out um, that adjustment. Now, one of the challenges is with auto mask is I've got to get into all of these areas, and it's not too hard to do. I'm on a fairly low resolution screen, and if I were to crank that up, I could do this, I'll do a lot better job of it. When I get over into areas like this, um, I'm going to actually make a bigger brush and I'm just going to click in some of these areas that are darker. I'm not sure what that red line is. I think that might be a little bugaboo because it's definitely not a filter. Let's just make sure. Let's turn auto mask on and see if it'll paint out. And it won't. So um, Now if I turn that off, um, you'll notice that I've got my mountains and trees looking fairly normal and yet I've got that nice sky. So let's go back to where we uh, um, added the graduated filter and it was here and with this quick tool we were able to clean all that up. So really a nice useful feature. You can do it with a radial filter as well. So how I see this tool is it allows you to create a nice starting point with a graduated filter and it allows you to use some of the special abilities of that filter or radio filter and then edit the areas that are affected by it so it's a quicker way than using just straight adjustment brushes it's important to note that this brush tool is not the same as an adjustment brush uh, if I use this brush tool I cannot um, I cannot change any of the actual settings of the filter I can simply decide what areas of the image I want to add or subtract that are affected by that filter. So this is not an adjustment brush, but simply a brush tool to edit the mask uh, overlay part of the graduated or radial filters. So a nice new tool from Adobe. Very, very useful in many cases. I think in this particular image, the effect I got was faster and better than if I would have used a normal brush especially trying to work in these areas up around the trees. Uh, I think there'll be other ways we'll discover to use it as time goes on. Hope this helps 
you and understanding maybe ways you might trade in your particular workflow.